Today we're going to be working on an 820-4924 board that's not turning on. My useless assistant here, introduce yourself, useless assistant, is eating and he is not fixing stuff because, well, no, I'm kidding. He's a good guy. He's a good guy. Come here. Big hug. Big hug. Okay, he doesn't want a big hug. He's, meet, he's hashtag me tooing because I did that. Anyway, so today we've got a 820-4924 board here and it appears to be dead. We're going to try and figure out why that is. Now, one cool thing that I did is I actually realized I could switch the lenses from my NEX EA50 and my A5100 because I don't need a zoom lens for my face, but I do need a zoom lens for the desk. So now there's no, you may notice that there's no more digital zoom. This is pure, beautiful, old-style analog zoom, and look at how detailed this can get if I want. Do keep in mind, this camera is still, this is still some piece of crap $480 camera. However, for, for 480 bucks, this is pretty sweet. Look at that. You get a really nice look at the board from high up, and I bet you could even zoom in on individual components on it from here. No need for a microscope. Let's just use the camera. Somebody said it's slow. Yeah, but I can make the servo faster. Look at that. Look at this. Like, you could solder with this. So this board looks pretty nasty. So that's the board on the desk. Let's figure out why this thing doesn't have a green light. So when I take a charger and I plug it in, as you can see, there's no light on the charger. See that? No light. Look at that in-focus MagSafe right there. So there's no light in the charger. Now, if we have no light in the charger, that's typically because bad SMC, bad DC inboard, missing PP3 v 2 SMC not turning on. So let's just get the multimeter in place and see if PP3V42 is present on this model board. So this is the adapter. This is where the adapter plugs into the board. 18 volts is going to go to the machine. Adapter sense is where the sense line from the adapter is going to speak to the machine. So this is how the computer tells that the adapter is connected. Sense adapter. That's going to go to the SMC on the Sys1 wire line. This chip is going to decide whether or not adapter sense gets to talk to the SMC. If this DC inboard dies and it decides instead of sending adapter sense to the computer it wants to send 18 volts because it's an evil Dr. Robotnik DC inboard, this chip is going to say, nah bro, F you, you're not getting my SMC. In order for this chip to work, it needs its VCC voltage, on SM, which is SMC, BCAC, OK, VCC, and that's going to come from U7001, which, if PP3V42 is present, and SMC BCAC OK is present. We'll take PP3V42 and shoot it through. So you need PP3V42 first for any of this stuff to function. So let's see if we have PP3V42 on this board. So we're going to see it's right there. Let's, let's find it. Ah, that's killing my eyes. Headache. Ow. Much headache. It looks like we get zero volts on PP3V42. So let's turn the charger off for a moment and see if there's a short to ground on PP3V42 because a short to ground on PP3V42 would mess up my whole system. And it seems like we don't have a short to ground. We have 3.9 kilo ohms, which is a little on the high side. I mean, a little on the low side, a little on the low side, but still, it works. Are you sponsored by Paul Daniels or is it out of kindness that you keep advertising it? Uh, I have not been paid by Paul Daniels. I just shill it because it's really good software. Have you, here's the thing, try Landrex Testlink, then try Paul Daniels' software, and you tell me that you wouldn't become a lifetime evangelist. Because to keep in mind, Landrex Testlink has been in there since 1995. It has not been updated in 23 years. Paul Daniels and Chlorodite were the two people and, and Piernoff that came by and saved us from that garbage Landrex software. And I remember the people that remember me. <coughs> so that's that. I am loyal to those that help me. So PP3V42 is missing. Let's just browse over to the PP3V42 circuit down here. And let's, so it, there's no short to ground. So let's see if the voltage in is coming to my chip. This chip is going to create the PP3V42. See, right over here on output is PP3V42. And it says down here, 3.42 volt G3 hot supply. So let's see if I'm G3 hot or G3 not. No, I, I wish I could go back in time and undo that. That was terrible. So let's see what we get on pin 6. So pin 6 of U7090. Now, one thing that I can do in Paul Daniels' amazing software is right-click. And when I right-click, it'll bring me straight to the chip. I can click on pin 6 and check the voltage available immediately. Thanks to the beauty of Paul Daniels' multimeter software, not only can I show you exactly where that is on the board, but I can show you the measurement on screen without having to read it out. 
removing any possibility that I'm dishonestly giving you random voltages just to pretend that I'm fixing warts. Not only does Paul Daniels' software make my life easier, it also keeps us honest. So, bitch. as you can see, we have zero volts on input. Why do we have zero volts on input? Why is that not turning on? Well, you never know. Maybe there's a short to ground on input. As you can see, we've got three capacitors that go to ground on this rail, on the input to 3.42 volt supply. So I'm going to turn off the charger and check to see if there's a short to ground on PP3 before 2 input. And it seems like open line, so that's not it. That's not it at all. So it looks like we have zero volts at this point. Now, we're going to keep checking our way back. We could check over here behind the diode. We could check here behind the resistor. But, and then we can check here and here and here. And that's a big fucking waste of time. Because let's say that the issue is that we don't have 18 volts up here. Then I'm screwing myself. So what I need to do is instead of checking over here and there and there and there, I checked at the end. Now I'm going to check around the beginning. So it looks like... J7000 is the DC inboard, the charging port, for the machine. And we are going to run through and see if this is there right in the beginning, right where that fuse is. So let's check it, F7005. At the DC in fuse, the one part of a MacBook that's never going to break because it's supposed to. So let's check at the fuse. So it looks like we get 18 volts. As expected, the fuse is not blown. Why would the DC in fuse blow when there's a problem? It's a MacBook. Fuses are not supposed to blow in a MacBook. So we're going to continue on to the r and see where the problem lies. Now, if we follow this, it seems that 18 volts is going to show up on Q7010. Q7010 is a transistor that's going to open and allow voltage through to my PIP3 before 2 circuit. So let's check out where Q7010 is and let's see what we get on the source, pin 5, and the drain, pin 1. Source is pin 5, and drain is pin... One, two, three, whatever this is. Anyway. Now, as you can see, the transistor on the board view is tall, like a basketball player. And the transistor on the board is wide, like a Reddit slash R slash fat logic, wider than it is tall. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check. I'm going to click on pin 5 because I want to see what's on input. And I, I don't know what pin 5 is. I don't know where that is. But I do know that that attaches to these two things next to it. And those two things, I know where they are. Tall thingy? tiny thingy. And over there, we get 18 volts. 18 volts. So next up, we're going to check the output. The output is pin 1. And this kind of looks like pin 1, because it has 2, 1, 3 all over it. And that attaches to things like R7020 pin 1. And R7020 pin 1 is over here. And that is the drain and we get zero volts, which means this transistor is not opening. Now this is a p-channel transistor, which means that this transistor is going to open when the voltage on the gate, and the gate over here is pin four, see where it says G, G stands for gate, is lower than the source, which is S, source, pin five. Now there is a couple of reasons that this could be. This circuit in its default state is supposed to have about five volts on the gate, five or 10 volts. And you could tell that because there's this voltage divider here. A voltage divider is going to be a resistor between the high voltage where you want the lower voltage to be and another resistor between where you want the voltage to be in ground. And the person who wants an explanation as to why this board doesn't work just ran away. Ahem. <coughs> Intern. Oh, well, fuck it. He could watch the video when it comes out. Anyway, so this here is going to act as the voltage divider. R7010 and then D7010. So you're going to have some of the voltage go to the gate of the resistor. Some of the voltage will go to the gate of the resistor, but the rest will go to ground. That's what this diode does, D7010. Now, there's two possibilities as to why the voltage in the source and the gate are the same. Behind door number one, actually three possibilities. Behind door number one, Q7010 is internally shorted. The source is shorted to the gate. Behind door number two, this capacitor that sits between the source and the gate is shorted. Behind door number three, the diode is bad. Now, we can figure out if, if one or two are the case by measuring the resistance between the source and the gate. If we have a low resistance between the source and the gate, then we know the cause of the problem. So C7012 is between the source and the gate of the transistor. So I'm going to right-click it and see if it shows up on the board. We're going to measure. Now what resistance do we get? We get 110 kilo ohms, so that's not the case. 
likely the case is the diode is bad or missing. So let's check where the uh, let's check the diode. Because if the diode is missing, then the voltage is going to be a little bit too high on the gate. There's not going to be any way to lower it. So let's we're going to zoom in on the diode and get a nice good look at this little bastard. The left pad looks messed up to me. A little bit. Inside the scope, it looks more. It's hard for me to hold it. Okay, so we're going to wipe that off the board. And after that, everything's going to work again. This is something I would never have. Yeah, just transistors is all. All you got to do is you have to trace back each point. So if we open this to full screen... Uh, yeah, so you don't, you're missing PP3, V4, too. Yeah. So are you getting voltage into it? No. So are you getting voltage here? No. You're getting voltage here? No. You're getting voltage here? No. So you chase it back. Are you getting voltage here? No. Are you getting voltage here? Yes. Ah, hmm. Problem here. Okay, what does this thing? What does this do? That's a transistor. Okay, how does it open? Well, you go, if, if you don't know how it opens, you Google. So you Google, and after you Google... You realize that this is a P-channel. So then we look at this. Okay, so how does it open? You Google, if you don't know, you Google, what is this? A transistor. How do, okay, what type of transistor? How does it open? Blah, blah, blah. So the voltage in the gate is to be lower than the source. Okay, what is the voltage in the gate? Same as the source. Okay, so now you have, you have identified the cause and the fault of your problem. What do you do from there? Okay, well, how is this going to get lowered? Well, there's a ground over here. The first thing you have to do is figure out what it was they were trying to do. So when you look at that circuit, you have to figure what they're trying to do is get the voltage in the gate to be lower. So how do you get the voltage in the gate to be lower? Ground. What's the pathway to ground? Here and here. So you'd measure this resistor. Resistor, good. Resistor, good. Diode, bad. So you, I have faith that you'd have figured this out on your own. This would have taken a little bit of time. I don't even know if I'd notice the pad. Yeah, and even if you didn't notice the pad, it would, it would get narrowed down to that little diode True. just by process of elimination. All right, diode is gone. Now, before I do too much, I'd like to examine what that looks like underneath. And man, it looks like one of those pads is missing. Yeah, it was connected to the, the bottom, but it wasn't connected to the board, so the wire. All right, so the left pad seems to be problematic. So the right pad is good. The left pad. See, a little bit of gentle scraping and it looks nice again. That's all it needed. And man, you would, you would have probably never seen that upon first look. And here's what's interesting. If you actually take a look at this entire board, and this is the, this is the p fun part that I told him right before we started, you would think that this was the problem. That, and this is, by the way, this is after cleaning. This is after I took a Q-tip to it, some alcohol. You'd think that this is the problem, the area that's clearly corroded and nasty and disgusting. But the actual problem with the board has to do with the spot that has zero corrosion on it whatsoever and no visible signs of damage without actually taking something off. So this is one of those really fun cases where the thing that's actually wrong is the part that you'd never guess was wrong. Yeah, but I mean, there was corrosion on this thing over here. Yeah. But the actual part that was damaged was the part that didn't look corroded. This, this, board was a, this board was a bit of a troll. All right, so now I just need to get myself another diode. Don't run away, little diode.
Let's see, how bad did we burn the DC inboard? Not that bad. That's a nice looking DC inboard. Barely got burned. Yeah, it's lovely. Also, these pins were really badly corroded. Plug it in, turn on the power supply, and we have a light. And we also have a fan spin. Meanwhile, there's no fan, so you can't see the fan spin. But it's drawing 0.6 amps. And if I check, you'll also notice that I'm getting CPU vCore. So watch. Here, I'll show you. Prove it to you. I'll prove it to you that this thing is on and running. Look at that. CPU vCore, 1.867 volts. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. Uh, I have such a headache. Uh, must record content, must edit video, must respond to criticism of not enough good content on main channel, must find somebody to edit video. I usually have, it's just in this last week my head's been killing me so I haven't edited any video. So instead of editing video, I've been uploading bug videos and people have been raging. Apparently when you create content that's based on electronics or parent engineering and then you replace that content with zooming in on bugs, people get mad. Imagine that. Eh, okay, let's see. Does this work? Are we live? Hey, it looks like we're live. Okay, so I have to pretend I don't have a headache anymore. So today we're going to be working on an 820-4924 board that's not turning on. My useless assistant here, 